please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Log, Supplemental. I think we've officially run out of where are they now names. We've scraped out the barrel and only got a few dregs left. 2024 will have to be a proper step up to replenish, or I'm going to have to start skinning Bork on Twitch for bits. On the 20th of December 2022, I put out a video titled Nadia Amire Doxes a Donor. I got the person's name wrong. It's Amine. The R was not there, it was an N instead. My apologies for that. I will link the video down below and of course correct the title before I upload this one. It's the only video I've done on this individual and I have not made it a point to look at them up until, well, the 4th of December. Yeah, I got bored and thought, let's go through my old list of people and uh, it's just, it's tragic, okay? I've run out of topics. I'm going to play a relevant part of that video, of course, because this is a part of Where Are They Now? I Know Wow! We're back for more! And we're going to then afterwards go through what Nadia has been up to in 2023, because it's been quite the year, and I think it's only right to share that year with you. It's not all been ups, quite a bit of it has been downs. What a shame. As in the video I'm going to show you soon, I didn't tell you who Nadia was, I'm going to do it now. Nadia, like myself, is a content creator. Nadia is very active on Twitch, has 1.2 million followers there, active on Kick with nearly 26,000 followers. Nadia has a YouTube channel with over 442,000 subs, and on the majority of Nadia's content, it's disliked. Still active, but for the sub count, the views are as bad as mine with my sub count. That's not a good sign at all. So one would surmise full-time Twitch streamer, where on her channel she predominantly plays Call of Duty. She does also have a sizable following on Instagram and on Twitter, and posts you know the usual relationship couple stuff and posing it up like there's no tomorrow content. That should serve as enough information to start this video off. So you can then watch what she did in 2022 that got her into trouble to then see what happened in 2023 as the year has gone by to understand why she's still a crap person really. I'll put a timestamp at the top if you want to skip this. Today I want to talk about doxing. I have, for many years, maintained a very consistent belief when it comes to the subject of doxing. Don't do it. It is not, nor has it ever been, complicated. People that do it are typically cowards. They think they are some kind of private investigator outing a predator. I will never justify, condone, or support doxing. In the case of the online space itself, there isn't much in the way beyond TOS on respective platforms to prevent people from going beyond that point of acceptable decorum. The community, the court of public opinion, normally sides with don't do it. Especially don't do it to those that support you and give you money and maybe throw you a little shade in the process. Very specific that was, wasn't it? Yes. Well, there's a reason for that. We're going to go to Twitch to talk about Nadia Amine. She's been operating on the online space for quite some time, so you'd think she'd know the rules by now. Turns out, no, she's more of a boomer than a boomer. Then again, she also plays COD, so... Ah, a hacked game. A video doing its rounds concerned Nadia receiving a donation. In the donation, well, I'm going to play the donation itself up to the part where she then doxed the person who gave the money. I'm going to remove that clip, yeah? So you can't hear that part. So you have the context of what she did and why she did it because she did dox somebody dollar to me and they'll hate so i just want to say daddy slayer i know you used your name as daddy slayer and you you said enjoy using cheats but what you don't know is that when you send me money on paypal it actually gives me your full name so thank you for the dollar dono i hope that for whatever reason you find actual time to do something in your fucking life because now you look like a fucking idiot again In space, if anyone wants to know. Don't know, appreciate that. That will go towards my McDonald's Happy Meal Fund. Appreciate that again, man. Wow, you're a dickhead. Congratulations. You may have noticed on the screen there a tweet. It's a tweet worth looking at. She had tweeted out on her verified blue checkmark account. Got banned on Twitch for 14 days for sharing personal information. 
whatever that means, cool. If you notice there, people at the Nadia Amine follows or mentions can reply. I wonder why you did that. I wonder if it's because you got a little bit of heat. Now what's fascinating about the responses to that tweet anyway, is that many seem to side with you, because it turns out they hadn't at the time seen the video from XQC, Carvos or Optimus. Because you're a dickhead. If anyone donates to another person, you do the following regardless of what they say. You say thank you for the generosity and the support. Regardless of the message included, you do not use personal information to then go and find them. Someone did that to me once, years ago. Years ago. They got a donation from me. And then they went and found the Facebook associated. I haven't spoken to that person in years because there are rules. And second, I locked that Facebook down. I don't even use it. Seriously. What kind of dickhead does that? In this instance, the answer is Nadia Amine. Wow! What a special, special dickhead. Now, two days later, Nadia addressed why she got banned properly in the form of a two minute, 40 second video. In today's video, I want to address something that happened to me this morning. I um I woke up this morning and I got a knock from my roommate, Dante, telling me that I was banned on Twitch. I was very confused. I really didn't understand what happened. I mean, I just woke up and to be honest, I thought he was like pranking me for a second and looked at my phone with a bunch of messages saying that I was banned. I was terrified. Like, I can't imagine what I do in two weeks of not streaming. I love streaming. I don't even like to take days off because how much I love it. I look forward to this every day. So when I saw that, I genuinely was scared. And it was probably one of the most terrifying moments of my life. You'd think if you were so passionate about something you care about so much, you wouldn't go out of your way to dox a member of your audience that had donated to you, even if it is a paltry sum of a dollar. But, um, I got banned on Twitch for 14 days, and here's the reason. I got banned for sharing personal information about somebody. So I kept getting a donation that popped up my stream labels, and it was a person that was sending me hate, and the name was Anonymous, and they did it four times. So? I was confused because, one, I'm just like, okay, the first time, you know, I do get hate on donation sometimes because you know they think it's funny to just have it pop up on the screen and I, I usually do get that it, it, this is not new but i haven't had somebody do it four times it doesn't matter what the limit is of how many times they do it there is never any justification for the action if this is such a complicated concept for you to understand digest and perhaps learn from chances are you are a bit too soft i was honestly really irritated and in a moment of weakness i said when, I, when, when you get a donation on your phone, the name of the person pops up. So I said the person's first and last name. And I just want to point out that all I did was say his first and last name. I know that there's rumors going around that I leaked the address of the person, but I didn't. I only said their first and last name. So at no point in that video, the original one where you leaked the full name, did you say their address? You spelt out their name. You said it three times. My view on that is permaban. But looking back at it and having the time to reflect, I realized that wasn't the best way to combat the hate. And I should have played into it how I normally play into like hate comments and stuff, how I troll them back. Yes, maybe you should have done that. Yeah, that that's that's how you deal with it. Why didn't I think of that? But I didn't. And like I said, in a moment of weakness, I kind of just said what was on my mind. And I realize now that I shouldn't have done that. This year has been one of the craziest years of my life. And there's a lot of stuff that happened to me. Um, you know, with streaming, I, I blew up. I, my life has changed completely. And with that came excuses, lots of excuses, not a reason for why you've done something, an excuse to justify why you did it. You cannot justify doxing by saying, but my year has been wild. A lot of good things, but then also, you know, the hate that came along with it. And I mean, like, if you go look at my TikTok comments right now, they're mostly hate. And I do play into it. I'm not trying to play the victim card. In that video, there were some relevant points that need to be raised. First of all, she has been causing or courting controversy for quite some time because clips were doing their rounds in 2022 in which she was suspected by netizens to be utilizing external game exploits, more commonly known as the aimbot. In COD, while it is a very much hacked game, aimbot is considered, as it should be in all games, haram, unless you're a beginner learning to play a game like bowling with the safety bars. Yes, I totally understand it then. Once you've established yourself, no, no, it be a dick move. She was also accused of using a wall hack program. This allows players to see the silhouette and location of their opponents through objects, solid objects, well, digitally made to look solid, solid objects. I'm gonna play a relevant clip of the claim 
of Nadia cheating in Warzone from a video called Nadia cheating in Warzone for four minutes. I'm a big Gouda guy. I like me some Gouda. Gouda is good. Has been I see oh my god, I'm stuck. The top comment on that video reads, Crazy how she played in a Call of Duty tournament and missed every single damn shot, but when at home she hits every shot. The second, I'm absolutely in shock that there's people still defending her, some people are just straight up delusional. They should be the other way around. Hmm, interesting. Nadia also has a tendency to beef with chatters or verbal spats with viewers, but also with teammates who accuse her of cheating. Her response to which, was to point out that this particular individual's kill count was quite low, which if anything doesn't help her in the slightest. The behaviour saw her get shadow banned from Modern Warfare 2's voice chat in November 2022. So with that vital context, we're now going to go into 2023, because I think this is quite important. We're going to go to April, where she made a joke, and the joke went quite flat. So Nadia recently posted this video showing how different players shoot. Now everything was relatively normal until she got to how the LGBTQ community shoots. Let me just show you all a clip of that. This is how the LGBTQ community shoots. Do you have any idea how annoyed I am that I had to use a clip from Noah Glenn Carter? Because the actual video itself doesn't exist anymore. Because of the backlash, Nadia released her own response video to the controversy this had caused denying the claims that she or the joke were homophobic, jokingly referring to her uncle's dog being gay and showing a video of her kissing a girl within the TikTok response video itself. Many believe, not just because of this but because of other things, that she should be permanently banned from platforms like Twitch. Now we're going to skip ahead to September 26th, 2023. Twitch streamer Nadia once again made headlines after she claimed she'd gotten permanently banned from COD Warzone. Jake Lucky shared a clip from Nadia's recent livestream during which she seemingly failed to log into the Battle Royale. Voicing her frustration at the situation, she, and I'll quote this, said, Wait, try to like start a game, maybe. It's, it's logging in my, my computer. Let me know when you're back on. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Bro, chat. This game. No. Oh. Load, motherfucker. Alright, it's loading. Bro. Bro, I just got banned. Bro, I just got banned. It says I'm ban- I'm not kidding, check my stream. No, I'm not. Bro, what the fuck? No, it's not funny. Nah, I'm actually pissed, bro. At this point, people were split as whether or not she'd been suspended from Warzone or was trolling the community for attention. Based on the regular view she gets, I couldn't say for certain to be honest. It should be noted at time of recording, if she had been suspended or banned, it was temporary because she's been playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 on Twitch as recently as the 3rd of December 2023, at time of recording on the 4th. The most recent thing that Nadia has been involved in is, well, defending Pokimane. Pokimane got a fair bit of criticism for the broke boy comment concerning the Minor Snacks cookies with the totally original recipe that has vitamin D in it. Basically a cookie for the introverts, but also healthy everyone. Yay! Nadia had posted to Twitter, You guys are people like Neon, Jack, Sneaker, who average thousands of viewers and do nothing but spread negativity and harass people in public. But when a girl sells cookies, 
that's when y'all want to speak out, the immense hatred towards women on the internet is unhinged. There is a massive false equivalence here. In a follow-up, she said, this is why there is a threshold on women. Yeah, it's easier for us to get publicity, but to reach the top is almost impossible. The standards upheld on us are so extreme. However, the men at the top can say do anything without repercussions. In this instance, you are equating sexism to the price of cookies. But also, you mentioned here it's easier for us to get publicity, but to reach the top is almost impossible. Because you often find those at the top don't want you there as well. I would point out though, you get thousands of viewers, you are successful. You turn something that was a spoof, you'd have fun during COVID lockdown into a career. But in that, you've been busted for hacking, for cheating, and when you play IRL, doing really badly, which then lends credence to you sucking because you use cheats. The conversation around the cookies is one I've already done a video on on this channel, so I'm not going to be drawn in on that beyond saying it's a con, quite frankly. I can get more for less and the quality is superior. In the case of Nadia, it seems to come from a place of ignorance to simply defend Pokimane. That or possibly being somewhat out of touch with reality for packs of cookies for $28. I could for myself in my country go to a few select stores and buy enough food for a week with that kind of money. And the quality would still be higher. Nadia is a consistent streamer on Twitch, streaming at least once every other day. The schedule is somewhat erratic more recently, but I would assume because of the Merry Meggy Month of Moistmas or Christmas or Sithmas or Festivus, she will be more active during this time because that will generate more views, more subs, more bits, more donos and trolling, plenty of trolling. How she handles it going into 2024, I'm not entirely certain, but as she's active on multiple platforms, I would assume she's going to continue pushing her brand and continuing to grow whilst also being called out on a regular by a lot of people of being a fake gamer girl, which seems like a harsh statement, but if you use aimbot or any other kind of assistance, yeah, you're fake. 